All right, we're going to talk about a couple of things in this video. We're going to talk about Funimation going mainstream in Japan and not in a good way. We're going to talk about a little TI that was in the previous filing we just talked about the other day. And we're going to have some fun with this. So this has been going around all over Twitter. Uh, Ron's public Yelp profile. This is public. This is not hidden. Nothing like that. There's nothing really bad on there. It's just his reviews of stuff. But it's some of the reviews that are really, really funny that really <laughs> that really make this worth talking about. Uh, first thing I noticed with Ron is there's no middle ground. He either gives something fives or ones. There's never like in the middle. It's always a five or a one. But the entitlement, the entitlement in one of these is really, really funny that I think is worth talking about. So this is like... You see, it even has funny six. So it's like, do you know who my girlfriend is? I'm, I date Monica Riel. This is literally his stance. So <laughs> let me go through this. <laughs> let me go through this here. We went there today, P.F. Chang's. Closed now. Wonder if you got him closed, Ron. So he says, we went there today. There were no less than 10 tables dirty. They turned us away saying there was a two-hour wait and there was no one in the waiting area. Well, Ron, they could have reservations. I'm just saying. Pretty sure P.F. Chang's does that. They could have reservations. They could have parties coming in. But, of course, Ron doesn't think about anybody other than himself. He doesn't take anything else into consideration. It's all about Ron, 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 Ron. We know this uh, for various reasons. But anyway... We were guests of this city. I guess the city should lay their red carpet out for you, Ron. You were a guest in their city. They should have known Monica Rial's fiancé was coming to town. They should have known. Shame on them. Shame on Boston. Where was the red carpet, Ron? We were guests of this city. Monica Rial is my fiancé. We were here for a major convention, and if you Google her name... You will understand why I am upset. They treated us with the utmost disrespect. The manager, Kent, was deplorable. The two ladies working, him, working with him were condescending and rude. Brandon Goldsmith, I would like to have a conversation. Your people were astoundingly rude and overwhelmed. Well, Ron, maybe they were in dinner rush. I don't know what time you were there. I'm going to guess you were probably there for dinner. And at restaurants, they all have these time periods called dinner rush. And yeah, usually people are overwhelmed during the dinner rush. Ten tables that were dirty? Oh my goodness. You mean a bunch of people got up and left at the same time? Heavens forbid, Ron. Heavens forbid. So... He continues, your people were astoundingly rude and overwhelmed. This is Anime Boston Weekend. Uh-oh. You mean that in 2016, how dare P.F. Chang's not know Anime Boston Weekend was there? I bet they get hit hard every Anime Boston Weekend. And he goes on to say, there was a blonde girl. I can't remember her name, but I expect a call. <laughs> she better call me and apologize and lick my boots. I date Monica Ria. Money, don't you know who my girlfriend is? <laughs> so it continues on. We'll start back here. This is Anime Boston Weekend. There's 25K plus people at that hotel. I'm sure Ron went and told all of them, don't eat at P.F. Chang's. Maybe that's why they closed. Hey, uh, random guy, you, don't, you better not eat at P.F. Chang's. They had dirty tables during dinner rush. There's dirty tables in there, sir. You, you guys don't want to eat there. Then, okay, then they probably went there and ate anyway. So, continues on to say, I will be calling Corporate Monday to ask if this is how they want their company represented. We took our business to Typhoon Asian Bistro. They had great service and were honored to have us eat at their establishment. I bet they told you they knew who Ronica Real was, didn't they? Is that why? They probably, oh, hello, Monica Real. Hello. And uh, they're like, you know, who the, f who the hell is this lady? I, don't, I have no idea who this is. 
So I just thought that was really funny. That was probably, that's the best one on that. The rest of them are pretty typical, just him complaining and, and being kind of uh, petty. But that one by far was really funny, as is this one. Knockouts, haircuts for men. <laughs> it gave it five stars. Let me tell you why he loves knockouts, haircuts for men. I love this place. Everything is really amazing. The atmosphere is laid back and relaxing. The best part is my stylist, Juliet. She is the best. They have a customer for life as long as she works there. The prices are fair and they offer great service. I bet you're getting a I bet you're opting for the hair wash and shampoo every time you get a haircut, aren't you, Ron? You're getting that you're getting that shampoo and that hair wash every time you get done, aren't you? We know what you we know why, Ron. So just like you did to PF Chang's, we know you like to interfere with business because Christopher Slatosh gave a nice little statement talking about just that. So this is from the filing, and we can just look through this and we can see that in uh, conversations. A uh, toy was repeatedly saying Vic was doing certain things, promising that uh, Vic was going to be taken in, and charges were going to come about of all this. And let's not let's not also ignore the fact that apparently he implied that his company would withdraw a promised sponsorship worth approximately twenty five grand if uh, if Vic attended the conference. So. Ron, you obviously love going after businesses. And we have it right here. The best part in this whole thing is when he's when he talks about this. I he talks about how he had conversations with Rial and he could hear Toy in the background talking to her and she periodically responds in agreement with him. And then we have all the text messages there. A bunch of people have already gone through them. I think these have actually leaked out before all of his text messages. And uh, we've went through them. Yeah, these we've all done videos on these before. So these are really nothing new. But it's basically him assuring him that, hey, I, I'm not, don't tell Monica about this. And, you know, make sure Vic's not there. It's going to be real bad. Going to be real, real bad. There's actually two other things in there that I want to go over in a separate video. But that's the, slit, the uh, Stan Dolan one and Vic Mignogna's own testimony. Go over that next, I think. I got one more thing to touch on in this video. And that's that Funimation, as much as they're trying to bury this, as much as they want this to go away, well, it turns out it's already hit Japan. So our favorite uh, Japanese voice actor, Yuki Matsuzuki, uh, put this out here. Now, I don't know how good this is. IGN Japan published an article detailing this nauseating leaked at hashtag Funimation recording. The voice of the U.S. version of Dragon Ball Z dubious remarks against certain groups, leaks, and burns. Now, a couple of people have confirmed to me that this is pretty much the same article that was in IGN. So IGN put this out. You can see it here with Ricada Law, Funimation, and we translate it. It's the same article that was out here in America. But what's great about this <laughs> is it's in Japan. This is, from what I understand, like the first article that's talked about it in Japan. I'm sure Japan Today will probably talk about it as well. Though I don't think they're the ones that uh, are going to go trending in Japan. You have to go to Japanese websites like this. So this is IG in Japan. Japanese people are reading this. So the real question is how much steam will this pick up over there? Because I think they'll actually cover it, unlike over here. ANN is largely ignoring it. I mean... I would have expected the most trusted news network of anime to probably pick this story up, but for the most part, they're like, no, we're just going to ignore it. In fact, I'm hearing, and uh, this could be smoke, but somebody contacted me and told me that ANN is going to write a fluff piece talking about how all oh, those were all just ta hot takes and, and bloopers, which they are. There are people getting, they're the voice actors warming up to do their roles or just having fun. Like I said, it's not, it's not the audio leaks that are a really big deal. I find most of them are really funny. It's the more high ground that they claimed to have that uh, got taken out. That's, that's kind of been my point on it is the karma and their moral high ground is gone. Now, uh, Japan and Toei getting mad about Funimation. Well, that's a whole different ball game. 
Nothing in here about the casting couch. I don't think that's going to come out in these articles. I think Japan will contact them directly about that. And then we just see how far it goes. a and will they cover Sabat's casting couch? That's the real big question that I want to know the answer to, to be honest. So anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe, share the video. It'd be a shame if Funimation kept having to watch this stuff because we know that their social media manager monitors everything. So it'd be a shame if he saw this on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram and anywhere you can sh you can share videos with the Funimation hashtag. It would be a real shame if he had to see this all day. So share the video, like, subscribe, hit the notification bell, all that good stuff, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.